Hi guys. Hi guys, so I'm gonna share with you my culture shock as a Kenyan living in the UK. I came to the UK on the 4th of October last year, 2023. So as, a, as we are making this video, I am completing, by the end of January 2024, I'll have completed four months in the UK. I thought I came here long ago. It feels like I came long, I came here long ago. <laughs> It's just four months. No, actually, you just turned into three, and now you are in the fourth month. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to share my experience with you guys, and I'm going to be honest but polite. But maybe if I'm too honest, don't take it negatively. It's just an experience and comparison of like the UK versus Kenya. Yes, we don't mean don't mean to hurt or offend anybody. So please, if you if you find it offensive. Uh, don't get mad at us and please you also stay kind and let us know in a kind way that we made a mistake Sorry, apologize in advance if any in any case we make a mistake yes yeah you'll see me looking down most of the time is because i have notes here i have written notes here because i don't want to forget anything yeah so culture shock number one guys People in London love to smoke. L people smoke left, right, center. Everywhere. Front and back. Everywhere without of respect. Yeah. Like, you know, in Kenya, people do smoke, but not this to this extreme. Like, I can tell you guys, the whole of, like, London, because I've only been to London so far. Mm -hmm. It is on me, only me and my husband who don't smoke. Actually, we are in the category of smokers because we are passive smokers. Literally. Like yes. all of us are just smokers. And something that shocked me even more. Young kids like teenagers, they are smoking out in public. Pregnant women. I have seen several pregnant women smoking. There's a time I even wanted to go and approach that woman and ask why she's doing that. She has two kids in a trolley, strolley, pushing them. And another wow. another kid was standing. And she's smoking with to with babies. This there. is very irresponsible. It is not just annoying because the babies are breathing that in, but also imagine if she is on breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. They already get addicted. They already yeah. got addicted in her room and they... Is it the same in the country where you are in or in the... Okay, not only in Europe, in places where you are. How is the extent of smoking? Because here, it is to the extreme. The accent. Guys, I was extremely happy saying that, oh my God, I'm going to an English-speaking country. At least I won't have problems. I don't have to learn a language. <laughs> Guys, never in my life did I think that an accent will be so challenging to understand. Like, I feel like this is a totally new language for me. I don't... Like, it's like they're not speaking English. Like, the British accent, guys. My God. It is a barrier to communication. It, for me, took how many? Five years to catch up with the lingo and understand, in any case, what they mean. Even, even if they speak slang, mm -hmm. for example, Southwest London, that is a very different thing than to Scottish or Irish or just... London wise. Yeah. Guys, the British accent is difficult to yeah. understand. And then I realized, especially, let, uh, let me speak about the British accent and then okay. we can go into the others that are there. So this British accent, guys, these people speak so fast and I feel like they, they, they don't give you space to like res to respond. Like the people I've interacted with so far, they speak. Prrr. I don't get anything. I'm like... Oh. Wait, slow down in my head. I'm like, slow down. I'm not get what, we're getting what you're saying. They don't give someone, like an, the other person, a chance to speak. Not only is the accent challenging, but the speed of speaking. In Kenya, they say that Kisi, um, I come from Kisi, that in Kisi we speak so fast. Mm. But guys, you have not heard the British people how they speak here very fast. And I barely get what they are saying. Actually, most of the time I'm scared to make calls to customer care or <laughs> he's always doing it on my behalf because i don't understand what they're saying to add salt to the injury guys 
London, actually, let me let me start by saying London should be the capital city of the world, because all nationalities, all every, from all, from everywhere in the world, they are here in London. So everyone comes with their own accent. They mix it with the British accent, and now there are the so many accents. Pressure is getting worse. The pressure is getting worse. <laughs> the pressure is getting worse. <laughs> you go to this place, you find a West African uh, who has mixed West African uh, accent with British accent. Now you get lost. You go to an Indian shop, Indian with, with plus uh, British accent. L guys, it Done. is bad. <laughs> it is bad. Anyway. Soon enough, I'll become British and I will mix my uh, Kisi and Swahili accent and make my own accent and challenge someone else who will come in the future to the UK. <laughs> what is the next bullet point? The next one, uh -huh. okay, I knew this is, uh, you experience winter and all those seasons of the weather, yes. but the cold, the way people describe the cold, unless you experience it, How you do don't... they describe it? Like the way you used to tell me it's very cold when we see in the in the in the t v how people are dressing up like dressing up in jackets, I didn't imagine th that is how cold feels like i I underestimated the type of cold that you guys were talking about until I had to experience it in real life when you dress, you have to layer yes, so this number is one I don't like number it, but number one most important thing is to you also, layer you also have yeah but i'm prepared to go out yeah we want to go out that's why we go so this this sweater look this is a thermal thermal what thermal shirt and then this is not just uh i've not on, only put on this mm -hmm. inside you have to put on let me it looks like this you see it has to be thick so you have to put clothes inside and then you dress up now i'm ready to go like it's so uncomfortable I don't like it. If but I will dress like this in Kenya, I would sweat so much. Yes, it's true. Yeah, and remember, I'm not going outside like this only. I have to put a jacket, a hoodie on, and then a jacket. Yeah. Anyway, at least the cold I was expecting. Now, one thing that really shocked me. Yes, what is it? You, I wasn't prepared that the sun sets at three thirty during the win winter season. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I was in a bus. Yes. Where was I coming from? I think from an interview. And it was around 3 and I looked out and it was dark. And I had to check again on my clock. Did my clock <laughs> stop working properly? <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Mm -hmm. I remember I texted you and I texted my niece. Like I took a video and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> the bus, in the bus there are, uh, you can see the time on the screen. I have to check on the bus that it is really the time that I that was. On you didn't bus. see the sun. I even had to go on Google ask what time is it right now. Yeah, like I like that was something that I wasn't prepared for. I never knew it happens. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. Sunset early during sunset. during winter time. During winter, and summer, you told me it, uh, the sun sets at ten p.m. at night. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, it sets around 8.39, mm -hmm. sometimes after 9 o'clock, but at 10 p.m. if you walk on the street, it's still light. Yeah. Another one is that, guys, you have to do everything, like most of the things, by yourself. I have seen people painting their houses by themselves. Yeah. Um, in the supermarket, nobody packages things for you. You like if you're at the cashier, the cashier, the the work of the cashier is to oh, like scan the do the the stuff and uh, make sure you have paid. But you are, you are the one to put f uh, to package the things by yourself. In Kenya, we in the supermarket, there's a cashier and there's someone who is helping to pack the things. Like they pack for you. Like that, I could I consider that right now luxury. We don't have that luxury. That here. was that was so new to me when I went to Kenya when when we were shopping in Naiwas. I wanted to put everything in my, in my shopping. By your own. But there was one person who is who is putting the things pre in the shopping prepared, bag for you. Prepared with their own bag, with my bag. They took my bag from my hand and they started to put it in I'm like, okay, so how much will it cost for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking on it. <laughs> How much will it cost for me? But this is included in the price. Yeah, it is the customer service, you know? Yeah, I didn't know that. 
it, it happened to me so many times. Yes. Like I forgot to pick my trolley or mostly the basket, the shopping basket. So I've gone in and I'm carrying things in my hand because I, I forgot to pick the, the basket. Do you know that they bring it to you? They bring it to you. They bring it to me? Yes, they bring, like it happened to me. Uh, I can remember in Best Lady, it happens a lot. Like they're just seeing, if, as, oh, she doesn't have a basket, they bring it to you. Here, you can never find that. You can never find that. No. <laughs> Most things here, you fix it yourself. Uh, so, um, I have not experienced uh, this directly, but from, I've seen from like th the surroundings, uh, police here are very active and they respond very fast. It is true. It is true. If there is a suspicion of crime mm -hmm. or life of danger, they are immediate. Yeah, I've had cases of where, like, maybe I've, I'm playing loud music in the house. Your neighbor can call the police and they yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, and, and they come and they ask you to scroll down the volume. Mm. Yeah? Or if you're it's you are disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Be because, because in residential areas, you cannot play. You cannot just play loud music. Unless there's an extreme crime that has happened, that's when the police will come. But in normal cases, like just a neighbor calling the police to come and tell the other neighbor to like lower down the music or to solve a dispute, we don't have it. I've never seen it happen. Does it happen, guys? Does it happen in, in our country? I don't think so. <laughs> it's I, I don't think so. But in my country, in the UK it as well, uh -huh. it, it's a normal thing. Uh huh. The police just very responsive. Uh huh. Wow. And that brings me to another point. Like, okay, in the area, most of the places, the security and safety. Yeah, the security and safety is way better. Yeah. Yeah. In Nairobi, I had been pickpocketed many times. Like oh. the rate, the rate of crime in Nairobi is so so high it is to bad. a point that. You, I even take care, I like to a point that I take care of my belongings more than I take care of my own life. Like you always have to have your bag, your backpack to the front. Or if it's your like handbag, you have to hold it tightly like this and to the front. I got to a, a time where I was so skeptical and so scared to go out because always you have to be scared. You know that someone will pickpocket you. So when I came here... I still have that in my mind. You know, it's part of me. I've gotten used to that, to being extremely careful, like who is in front of me, who is on my side, especially in Nairobi town at the center, the CBD. So like, you know, you have to hold to your things. You can't take phone calls aimless. You can't hold your phone like this in Nairobi CBD. You can actually not even in CBD only, like even the, like generally you can't just walk around um even in the estates you can just walk yes, around um, i read on google maps many 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 white tourists scared of these things and they they advise when you go to this place when you go to that place make sure you stick with the taxi driver you stay in the car you don't you don't go out from the car i'm like man that's too much there's so many cases of people even like they talk to you they drag you i don't know how they do it and then they steal from you there's this it's the crime rate in short is very very high compared to here when i came i still had that mentality even right even nowadays I, it has not that trauma has not come out of me like i still hold i still hold my bag tightly to myself and I my backpack I put it to the front and my baby is always like why are you holding your bag to the front nobody will open your bag in Nairobi if you try to carry your bag from the back like your backpack from the back you'll find it open and your contents missing I also realized that when I carry my bag like that here people look at me like what's up yeah so it is, it is not that dangerous here mm -hmm. as in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that I can just walk with my phone like this and not get scared that someone will snatch it. But mm -hmm. it's good if you have a ring on the phone and it's up and you can put your finger mm -hmm. in. So make sure you have it in hand. Yeah, you have to be careful everywhere you go. 
like in, in, anywhere in the world you can find pickpocketers but now we are talking about the rate in nairobi it happens like yeah. in the open people will see you being pickpocketed and they will not say anything about it there's a time my phone was snatched from the bag in a bus the guy who was seated next to me saw them stealing from me but he didn't tell me like thieves do it so openly and nobody will help you so the fact that that doesn't happen here so openly it makes me feel safer even when i go out i don't have to be worried all the time scared all the time looking into the bag like oh is my phone still there like i used to get stressed out if i will ask you is the racism uh, something to be worried about here especially here in london no mm -hmm. it's not high if if you are a victim of racism in the UK. In uh, London. Let's talk about London. In you... London, there's no way that it can be dismissed. Mm. Especially public racism. Mm -hmm. There's no way. We are, we are multilingual, multiracial. Multinational. Multinational, multiracial country with all type of people. colors, people, everything, culture. If you don't respect someone else's uh, color, religion, or culture, they they will be. Other people will stand up for you. Yeah, if you, if you can't stand up for you for yourself, others will. Uh -huh. if, if if you if you keep quiet while someone is, some for example, you are seated on a bench, seated on the train, and someone starts calling you on Russ's names. There's no way that if you don't protect yourself, someone else wouldn't. Mm -hmm. They would, they would, they would stand up. They would ask, what did you say to her? Aww. Why did you say that? What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not because of sympathy is because it's not right to do that but i hope i hope not to experience it especially in the healthcare and in situation where my life is on the line i i pray i will never experience that i realized that here you address people by their names even your boss you will address them with your name even writing email i was told that you just don't write a, uh, write hello madam you address the person directly. Hi, Attila. I hope this email finds you well. Even old people, you call them by their names. Yeah. Oh, that is so disrespectful in Kenya. Mm. You cannot, I cannot just, like, let's say at work, I call my boss by his name. Oh my gosh, I even feel... How, do you, how did you call? Sir, madam, boss. If it is an old person, you have to address them respectfully. Don't call them by their name. Mm. Yeah. Like even me calling your mom like by her name. Oh my god. That is so disrespectful in Kenya. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that one I found it to be very, very amusing. Like people just refer you refer to you by your name. <laughs> How do you call your boss? You call him by his name. Uh yeah. Oops. I noticed that women here. The females here, their makeup game. Hey. 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 Everyone in London, Even female, you. I've also started. Even I'm you. fitting in. Ah. Guys, lashes. Oh my God. People here like lashes. But especially why? the lashes. Why? I don't know. I don't know. But I just, I was amazed. Like when, I, when we were in London, all, almost every female has mm -hmm. lashes on yeah, like, nah, even have. i have one i'm just trying to <laughs> 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 they have lashes on make the makeup game laying edges eh, 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 eh. i think i should go do my hair by the way because eh, eh, out there the pressure is getting worse people are in good makeup laying their la their edges nicely eh, I was so like, okay. guys, our next project is to invest in her beauty. Yes, invest in my beauty so that I can now become a proper UK babe. <laughs> London babe. Yeah. I don't know if the other parts of UK they do that, but I noticed. They I do. noticed here yeah, long lashes.
I don't know how these lashes are not blown away by this <laughs> this wind. It is extremely windy here. Yes. Yeah. I do not understand why there's so much paperwork here in the UK. Like all the mm -hmm. time I have to receive posts, mails every day. Letters are being dropped in our in our mail. Why why can't they just send emails? Like it's too much guys here. Every day you must receive a letter. Let, they like letters a lot, a lot. If, yes. I, if I bring out the, the, the letters that you have already received while I'm here, especially on your name because you're the one paying <laughs> things. Eh, a lot, a lot, eh, I'm telling you. Every time on the door I must find, like seriously. Every day. It's extreme. Mm -hmm. I think they should uh, move away from that now and go digital. You know, because this is a... I don't... Correct. Okay, tell inform so me. So that I can start cleaning up my digital email at uh, email mailbox. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if you understand, if you know why they do this, kindly tell me. But I think it is high time, like to save the planet, as you have said, it is high time they went digital now and stopped sending too many letters. Yeah. Yeah. I almost forgot this one. People here. My, know how to mind their own business in kenya we are very curious like yes. uh in the road on the road if something will happen like you will see everyone looking wanting to see what is happening people surrounding that area like people come out of nowhere mm -hmm. to see what is going on but here you can start dancing you can do things crazy things nobody will care nobody will, will even look at you it's, it's good to be curious it's good to be curious it's good to be curious. Yes. It's, it's not good to mind your business too much. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. <laughs> There's so much culture shock. Some things I've even forgotten to say here. I don't yes, know we promise there will be more. Yeah, the, I, I think uh, I wanted to talk about the transport system, but it is complex and it's a lot of comparison. So, and I feel like I want to show it to you practically. So that will be another video. I think a video after this, if not, mm -hmm. it will be in a future video. I will show you guys the transport system. Actually, it was, it was my number one culture shock because it's way different from Kenya. So we will go out there with my baby, create videos and show you how it happens here. I have few videos from Kenya. I hope you've not deleted. And I, did not, I did not touch your stuff from the phone so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video kindly tell us your opinion about all we have said in the comment section below please be kind and um i'm looking forward to read these comments thank you for liking sharing commenting and thank you for always always supporting us we love you so much yeah and thanks for the nice comments for last time Please continue the good job. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.